wasn't gonna leave you guys hanging as per usual. All I do is work or DoorDash, or uh, if I'm not doing that, I'm at concerts. So, for Alex Bowman, finally! Whee! Man, it almost went up to the fucking tree. <laughs> That wasn't so bad of a race. So a lot of comers and goers, like the biggest amount of comers and goers uh, by far for uh, Chicago Street Course. <sighs> I've been waiting for so long for Alex Bowman to finally fucking win again. <laughs> I thought I was in the beginning to think that he was going to go on some Dale and Hart Jr. 2008 to 2012-esque winless streak, but... <clears throat> Perhaps rain was a blessing in disguise. I, for a while, thought I was going to feel like a goddamn potato sack in the pot under a poncho. Well, that was given to me by uh, bystanders at the uh, race because I was left without a poncho. And I thought I was going to have to run so many miles to find shelter. But, whoo, wow. <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to see Christopher Bell win fourth time in person but a lot of uh, surprising circumstances happened because Shane wrecked out of the race early after I thought he was going to actually dominate and go on to win the race <laughs> but nope he said he uh finished where uh Alex Bowman coincidentally finished uh last year <laughs> the only drivers to finish first and last so far at the Chicago Street Court which is quite a very bizarrely specific uh, statistic <laughs> to point out. <laughs> so, uh, as far as uh, being a fan of Alex Bowman goes, was the $171 worth it for the grand general admission? I'd say yes, but would this be something I would do yearly? Uh, I don't think so. Not unless if you can show me a cheaper price for the grandstands. Because um, if Chicago Street Course isn't going to have scoring pylons for the people at the Grand Admission or uh, the screens for the fans in the Grand Admission, General Admission, unless if they have fans right next to them uh, watching the stream of the race, like that one uh, dude next to me, then I don't really think this is worth it that much. I mean, it is, I will concede... The Chicago Street Course is a very entertaining race, don't get me wrong, but I I just don't think uh, it's a very practical for avid racegoers like me to go there all the time. I mean, uh, why exactly would I want to pay $171 for general admission with no scoring pylon or a TV screen unless I have, if I have uh, fans right... Yeah, within spitting distance from me when I could just go expend like $55 to see some of the best vantage points at say Martinsville or even Charlotte for that matter or even Darlington for that matter <laughs> then again this is a city so they're obviously gonna overcharge you out the assholes with uh, an abundance of fucking fees <laughs> <sighs> But as far as this race goes, um, there were definitely uh, givers and takers. Uh, even fucking Joey Hand of all people was leading a, a few laps. And uh, really, Alex Bowman. That was the last thing I ever expected was Alex Bowman snapping his winless streak right in front of me. But, you know, despite some of the critiques I may have for the Chicago Street Course, um... I will say that at least they picked a uh, beautiful spot for uh, this uh, course design instead of just some where in, in the middle of the uh, rust, rusty industrial areas. They picked a uh, central uh, park area part of the city or something that's akin to Central Park. But yeah, this is my third time. My third 
time seeing Alex Bowman win. Third time. As far as the current lineup for Hendrick Motorsports goes, I've now seen them win more times than any of the OGs. Seven times across Jimmy Johnson, five times including his championship, Casey Kane once in Kyle Busch once back in 2006 when he was a part of Hendrick Motorsports, and now 11 times with the current lineup. Once for Byron, twice for Chase, three for Alex Bowman, and five for Larson. And if Larson wins three more times, he will be the winningest driver to my history. But, damn, this definitely was, took me a lot of hiccups to get through. But, man, oh, man, I was uh, pretty uh, bummed out to see that Kyle Larson wrecked out of the race. And, of course, uh, Chase Elliott finally uh, gets a f finish worse than 19th. But, hey-ho, Kyle Larson's still the points later, so it's not a big deal. But, yeah, if this uh, race doesn't work out long term, then I think we, I think it's time that we go back to Rockingham Speedway. Don't get me wrong, there, I will say that the racing is fun. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's just that um, I just don't think it's very practical for a lot of race goers. So, if you want people to st if, stay here long term, then I suggest you... Uh, have some portable uh, stadium lights for the tr racetrack. Especially when it rained here two times in a row. And each time, uh, well not each time because I didn't watch the first race. And But this particular time uh, it was uh, darkness determined under the outcome of the race. So uh, I... Because, like I said, if you want this track to stay long-term, then I think you should really take my words very seriously. The racing itself is just fine, but if if you want to, like, uh, if you want the, the, the right quality racing or fans to keep on going, then you need to do some uh, renovations for this uh, street course, because uh, it's going to take a lot more than beautiful scenery inside the track and badass racing to want fans to keep coming back it needs to have practicality and authenticity to it but i just dis despite me uh feeling like a potato sack under the uh, scoring pylon and how i sadly lost my uh, water bottle because the security checkpoint is really really peculiar i still had a fun time and enjoyed myself and uh Felt, couldn't have felt more triumphant for Alex Bowman prevailing at Chicago. How much you want to bet that even if Chicagoland was still on the schedule, he probably still would have prevailed. Whether it be the Chicagoland uh, Oval Racetrack or the Chicago Street Course, I think Alex Bowman still would have prevailed either way. Well, nevertheless, this was a fun race, don't get me wrong. I just wish there were uh, scoring pylons and, uh, well... The TV screens so we could uh, keep up with the race. I mean, fuck, fucking hell. When I was at Road America, at least there was a TV screen for both me and my uh, buddy Chandler to keep up with, so we wouldn't, so our brains wouldn't be lost in oblivion or have to rely on people right next to us that are watching the stream of the race. But yeah, I think I've gone long winded time, long enough. But nevertheless, hell fucking yeah, Alex Bowman, go Hendrick Motorsports. Go Kyle Larson, go Chase Elliott, go Byron, go Bowman. You couldn't be any more happier. And 2024 has been kicking a lot of ass, both in terms of the NASCAR season and my personal year. And I hope it continues to kick all sorts of ass, no matter how hard the steel is. But like I said, the racing was indeed top-notch, but I think it still needs some work for the race fans so they can have a more satisfying experience. Oh yeah, and provide shelter in case of it rains or thunders. For, you know, well, safety's sake. So people won't feel like they are uh, in danger of becoming another Brian Zimmerman headline. Okay, okay, I'm gonna shut up now. See you later, everybody.